The new Olympic Park running track is taking shape down on Swan Street. Visiting delegates check on progress for the upcoming Olympic Games. Nice shorts. This state-of-the-art facility should be the home of Victorian athletics for at least the next 55 years. Hi, I'm Hamish. I'm Tom. That's John. That's Ron. And this is Behind the Tent. The panel's back to talk all things Melbourne Track Classic and the Vic Champs. Mark will hit off with the Track Classic and it couldn't get any bigger than the 5,000 metre field. Yes. I'm going to catch up with some Olympic Park legends and icons of Victorian athletics as we celebrate our home of almost a century. I have many wonderful, wonderful memories of my time spent at Olympic Park. But first, I caught up with the legends of Zardapec at the 50th anniversary dinner. This is a night for those who have gone the journey in a race that has stood the test of time. The Zatapec, as you know, is an Australian sporting institution and as Len Johnson said to me earlier this evening, if you class yourself as a high quality Australian distance runner, you've either won or will win the Zatapec. And first, we introduce the inaugural winner. In fact, five-time winner, 61, 62, 63, 68 and 69, Ron Clark. favourite Zatapec memory? I'd break your world record. <laughs> What's your favourite memory of Olympic Park? Is it the Zatapec races or other races as well at Olympic Park? Uh, a whole series of races. Uh, you know, uh, seeing John Landy there do some of his uh, magic races, seeing the Hungarians there come out in those special night meetings, uh, but especially the twilight meetings with Landy trying to attempt their world record. Uh, was phenomenal. Uh, some great memories of Olympic Park. Zatapec back back in the days when when I was racing it, it was a you know it was a, a major a major a, event, a major race. Yeah. But like a lot of things, they start off small, and um, you know it's events like this that give us a bit of historical perspective and, and make something that we thought at the time was just another race really quite significant. Um, I've won it a couple of times and then. I could sit in the stands and I remember it, I think there was one they were doing up Olympic Park and uh, Sean Crichton and myself sat down the back straight having a few beers while I think Darren Wilson might have outkicked um, Mark Tucker or something I think, but it's a great race, a good way to enjoy it. But I definitely remember doing a lot of sitting and waiting and um, they were great, like you say, competitive races. There was no pacemakers. Um, it was always quite a tactical affair and, you know, you're sort of relying on waiting and seeing what was happening. And I think for me, yeah, Zatapec was always that memory of, you know, who was going to be strongest at the end and really just trying to be patient. Again, with the 10K, you really do need to be patient and um, just make sure you're feeling good at the right time of the race. I actually remember standing on the sidelines, and I can't quite pinpoint the year, but uh, watching Natalie Harvey and Claire Fernley, uh, Carolyn and, and, and the other girls, um, you know, battle it out out there. And, and I actually, uh, the year that Natalie won, I actually thought, gee, wouldn't it be great to be out there and be able to run that fast? And last year I got to do, you know, run pretty fast. So, um, yeah, that's probably my, my most fondest memory. Do you know, it's funny, it's probably the first because I'd never seen it before. And uh, it was the first for Kenyans, Kamau, and Di Costello was really in his prime. And uh, Kamau just broke 28 minutes and uh, just a magnificent race. Look, I, they've all been good. Uh, that whole period with Deke and then Monaghetti and Lloydy, of course, just before that. But probably the first one really got me and that set the scene for the others to follow. Just loved it. Hi, I'm Reese Hoffa, and you're watching Athsvik TV. Over 100 years of memories and outstanding performances, Behind the Tent catches up with those athletes that made their mark at Olympic Park. Freeman's digging in, the clock ticks over, it's fast, it's real fast, she's done it! 
have many wonderful, wonderful memories of my time spent at Olympic Park. I mean, I moved to Melbourne in 1991, and so, and right up until 2002. So that's, you know, that's a you know, long enough stretch to become quite acquainted with the place and many hard training sessions, slugging it out and um, and I've forged a lot of wonderful friendships too, including, you know, with training partners and girls I raced against, um, you know, people I trained with and um, so aside from the training there were the races and not only uh, the inter-club races Thursday nights but but also the international flavour as well, you know. Uh, well back then, it was probably back in the 60s, it was still a cinder track and um, we only got to compete there very special occasions because the, the two bodies were separate, the Women's Association and the Men's Association. So when we were invited to go to Olympic Park to compete, and I think it was all schools as a, as a, a, a young girl, uh, that was really, really exciting and uh, along the journey, of course, you know, I used to train there and. I ran my record there uh, 35 years ago, next week that'll be, so and the record still stands. So I guess the highlight for me would be uh, setting that Australian record in 1976. I remember being in year 10 and I ran my first meet at a Thursday night track classic in a hurdles and I loved competing at Olympic Park and then I went on and I long jumped, triple jumped there and then of course regressed to pole vaulting and I broke my first world record at Olympic Park so I have really strong memories there and I ended up breaking another one so it's very sentimental, I almost feel a little bit sad to hear that it's closing down and there won't be any more meets there. Competing there started off as something that had a lot of anxiety around it because it was the, the highest point. It was the highest point that we could possibly reach, um, sort of coming through juniors and then all of a sudden I kind of lived there. You know, I was training there three, four, five days a week. Um, you know, the, the stairs on the back straight there, I became very familiar with those. The, the night I jumped seven metres is obviously going to be a special night to me for the rest of my life. I, I know a lot of people, they, they consider when they've competed back you know, to be a different life, but I will always have that a very fond memory. And it, at Olympic Park, I think because it has s such history there, and um, it will also add to that memory. There's one, uh, one from my point of view is very different. It was after the 1952 Olympics, which I didn't do it very well in, I came back and early in December, a few months later, I lined up for an inter-club event. And it was a poor day, windy day, wet day, bad track. I was in the second row and uh, it worked out extraordinarily well for me. I had no idea what I was doing. I thought I might have a chance to break the Australian record. And when I finished, nobody would speak to me. And because I'd got within seven tenths of the world record. What a great chat to some of the legends of Victorian athletics there, Hamish. But talking about legends, this old baby here, Olympic Park, this is going to be the last time we're here. And what better place to say goodbye than up in the gods, up at the top. We're on top of the world here, Hamish. We are perched precariously, Tom, on top of Olympic Park. We've got a great view of uh, the brand new track. It's looking uh, sparkling and new. No one's run on it yet. So uh, we're hoping for the next month or so there'll be some fast times run, some big throws done and uh, some high jumps. But before we head there, AV Shield, the pinnacle of Athletics Victoria competition really for oh, all the clubs, is wrapped up over at the Knox track at the weekend. The surprise packet of the season, St Kevin's, took out the men's crowns, first time in the club's history. Yeah. What a sensational effort by those boys. Oh, it was very good. Uh, a big team effort, not just uh, one or two guys. Everyone put in over the season. You had to get there to the final. You couldn't just, you know, just coast along. It was very impressive. Fox Hill and the women. Always strong and, and took out the women's title and uh, Preston, three titles, very good. And Hamish, one of my other highlights of the Shield final had to be the men's steeplechase. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, what can you tell me about it, Hamish? Well, uh, there's been a lot of talk recently about uh, swimmers uh, coming out of retirement to get to London and uh, I thought I'd get in on the action. I, I think I might make the swimming team for, uh, for London. Not the only one, uh, another uh, old Zavs athlete. Thought he might join in the action with uh, Thorpe and Klim. But, but what we really hear about Hamish, Melbourne Track Classic, the last ever Victorian State Championships here at Olympic Park, will hit off with the Track Classic and it couldn't get any bigger than the 5,000 metre field here. Yes. I think it's probably the deepest field we've had ever in the country's history. Yeah. Forget the Sydney Olympics, we've got five men under 13 minutes and it's going to be absolute corker. Hamish, talk us through who we're going to see. Well, it's going to be a blistering race. We've got the, the five guys under 13, we've got Chris Zielinski, we've got Bernard Legat uh, with the blistering kick that uh, everyone will be scared of. You know, everyone will be watching him for the whole race, but you've got to take it out hard. We've got Tegan Camp, 
Always, uh, always dangerous. Got Motram. We got Isaac Songok. Can't forget Songok, oh, the sixth fastest man all time. A 12:48 he's dropped. Oh, but look at the likes of Legat. I think he's the American record holder over the distance. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, I think so. And I think Salinsky might might be the second fastest American all time. And the American 10k record holder, first uh, white man under 27. So very exciting. And so we better look at the Aussies in the race. Oh, Collis yep. Birmingham, the second fastest all time, a 13:10 sort of athlete. Benny St. Lawrence just keeps on building on his form throughout very the season. Exciting. He's at a 13:25 best, but surely he's going to need to better that to beat the IAAF qualifying standard of 13:20. Yep. Uh, Dirty Dave McNeil, our favourite yeah, here. The Skinny Thunder, we love him. He's a great athlete. We're going to see him go about his business. 13.25 uh, is his best. He's going to go faster again. He's an NCAA champion. So very much used to competing against some of these American guys. So we could have a blindingly fast race. And uh, the talk is pace maker will go through 3Ks, just under eight minutes. That's the rumour. And uh, so then after that, it'll be on like Donkey Kong. Well, they're going to be flying. I'll tell you one other man that's going to fly around this track. We saw him do it last year, David Rodisha. Quietly, I'm just a little bit excited oh. about seeing this man again. He is the world record holder at over 800 metres, passed the fastest two times ever over the distance. Rieti in Berlin last year, he broke the week. In a week. The oh, guy so is red hot. Not sure whether it'll be a four and eight that he's going to run here, but just the prospect, especially since Nick Simmons from the Oregon Track Club's out yeah. here. He's a finalist over the eight at a world championship level. What a spectacle that would be on Australian soil to see those two going head to head with the very own Lachlan Renshaw and Alex Rowe. Alex Rowe, the his own. We'd love oh. to see him going up against him again. It's going to be fantastic to see. He's just got to hang on the back, get dragged through the first lap super quick and uh, bring it home as fast as you can. Now just to touch on a couple of other events we've got to look at. Danny Samuels will be having a crack at the discus. The just champions. starts to work into her form here. She hit yeah. 65 metres come Sydney Track Classic time last year. She hasn't thrown over 60 this year, so I think she'll be looking to hit that off in Melbourne. Sally Pearson has been dominating the women's sprints. It'd be nice to see someone come out in her and give her a run for her money. Yeah, be... She ran her second fastest all time uh, 200 metre up in Brisbane yeah. just earlier on. So she'll be looking to keep building on that momentum. Uh, also got to look at the likes of Sean Rowe, uh, Ben Offerens. Word is Johnny Stephenson's going to be going around oh, in the 400. Be good to see. He's a live wire. Kevin Moore, he was a gold medalist in the relay. So oh, it's going to be a cracking 400 as well. And don't forget the big man Dale Stevenson and Reese Hoffer is coming out oh, here. Big Reese. You've seen him do cartwheels at indoor meets. He's eaten oh, chicken at the mm. US Champs. He's going to have a red hot crack at this shot. We just want him to smash out a big 20 something and maybe even a 21. Which is a perfect segue into the Victorian Championships where oh. Dale will be the pin up. He's going to go about his business on Super Saturday night. Oh, he's now, got to get a, down here for Super Saturday. It's going to be big fantastic. Night all, the the big, uh, all the big events are on. If there's a big night of track and field, it's going to be that. The women's 800 has just got me salivating. Oh, if I mentioned the name Tamsin Lewis to you, what would you say? Well, she hasn't run an 800 for a while, and she's in, coming back into some fantastic shape. She's a crowd favourite. They love her down here. They really love her on the back straight. They love her everywhere on the, around the track. Now, we're going to throw into the mix national champion Catherine Katzenvarkas, oh, yep. Kelly Hetherington, the emerging young gun. Amanda Paulin's going fast at the moment. Caitlin Pincott, oh, one of our top rank athletes better and last better. couple of years. They keep going through the mix. It's just going to be off the Richter scale this 800 metres. It's going to be fantastic to watch. I reckon you're going to have to run about 204, 205 to, to get yourself the title. And it's going to be fantastic to watch. They might even sneak down towards those World Champs qualifying times. That's going to be as fast as we've seen people run here for a while over the women's 800. It'll be great. I've also got to throw Trishel Kingdom into the mix. Oh, yes, She'll definitely. be there about as well. She medalled last year too. Looking to some of the other events. We haven't seen this man yet. Aaron Rouge Charette will be oh. flying up the home stretch here at Olympic Park. The one and the two. Sean Rowe is going to have a dip against him over the 200. Oh, that'll be good to see. The, uh, the sprints man versus the, the middle distance guy. Whether Rowe will get him over the last 50 metres or whether the Essendon man, he's just got that pace out of the blocks. We also move through into the field. Of course, Margaret Satterpie will be throwing the, the oh, shot put. Yep. She is a Commonwealth Games bronze medalist. So I think we seem to forget that every yeah, now and again. Yeah, but definitely. Just dis scoots under the radar a little bit, but and she's been throwing pretty big uh, distances. She'll be going up against yeah. Kim Mulhall, who was uh, fourth at World Championships in the yeah. junior distance uh, just earlier last year. Storied uh, throwing name, the Mulhall name. And so. she'll be going in the discus as well. Yeah. Margaret Satterpie will be competing against yeah. her too. Uh, and all throughout the track and field program, it's just going to be huge. It's the last time we're ever going to be around this stadium. It's been a home of 97 years, and it's going to be okay. one hell of a send-off. So it's not just Super Saturday, no, it's Fantastic days, Friday, fantastic and it's send-off Sunday. Oh. So it's how we're going to go through this whole Victorian track and field I'm championships. Try not to cry, Tom. But what we can do, and we'll have photos across the weekend, we're going to be live updates on our Twitter. Oh, now, I know you get tweet. Get on the tweets. You've got to get on the tweets. It's all good. You find everything out. All the hot gossip. At Athsvic. We'll have it on the screen below you yeah. now, but at Athsvic is where it's all about. The photos will be on Facebook. Athsvic TV is going to be all over it, like a fat kick on a cupcake, on the video. So you're going to tune into that as well. But on that note, we're going to have to send off from here because it's just such a big week of athletics coming up. I'm excited about it, Hamish. I'm excited. And this is the last time from Olympic Park, and I'm saying goodnight. And it's good night from him. Good night.
not a bad view, Hamish. It's a fantastic view, Tom. It's been a great home for athletics, this place. Uh, what a century it's been. Oh, wonderful to see. I'm going to miss this place, Hamish. So am I.